What's up guys and welcome to yet another first look at Planet Coaster Console Edition. In this video we're going to be covering all things related to scenery but if you guys want to skip ahead to the next video where I cover the create tab which is very unique and very new to Planet Coaster go ahead and click just over here and it'll take you right to it. Scenery, scenery, scenery. This is my least favorite part about Planet Coaster is the scenery. Not because the scenery tool is difficult to use or hard to wrap your head around, but just because I get so extremely bored placing down rocks and trees and plants and things. It's just, it's not for me. You guys, it's really not. But nonetheless, to get to the scenery tab, you just hit LB or RB on your controller and it'll take you right over to it. Now, immediately, a very big difference from the PC version of Planet Coaster to now the console version is that there seems to be quite a bit more blueprint scenery that you can place down. I'm not really sure why Frontier has done this. I'm assuming it's because there are people like myself who don't like placing down individual items to be able to boost their scenery rating for their rides or just make their facilities look a little bit nicer. But we have a couple of different categories here to work with. We have special effects, ride scenery, regular scenery, buildings, and nature. So let's start with the special effects blueprints here. It looks like we have about eight different fireworks sequences that we'd be able to place down wherever we so choose. Now it's important to note when placing down a display sequence of any kind is that typically it'll run on a sort of loop. Now if you don't want that loop to run, one of those items in that blueprint group that you just placed down is called the display sequencer. So if it's running on a loop that you're not okay with, all you have to do is click on the entire group. You can then go to edit scenery group, click on the object you want to interact with. In this case, it's the display sequencer. And now if we go into the settings, you can see that it's set up for on trigger only. Now what that means is if you had a coaster that had a trigger sequence to it, you could then apply that to this scenery group you placed down. So every time that that coaster it's the same spot on the track, fireworks will then deploy. You could also do it at specific times of the day. You could even have it loop and be on a trigger. You could have it continuous, just non-stop fireworks all the time, which in theory seems like a good idea. Only if you're doing a sandbox park, as fireworks are extremely expensive over time. If you were to place this down in a challenge park, let's say like straight out of the gate, you'd probably go bankrupt within the first five minutes if you left it on continuous. And then we have on trigger only, which is how it was set up before. Apart from the fireworks, we do also have the option to place the planet theme song archway, which I'm assuming just has a sort of speaker system that plays the planet coaster theme song. It is quite literally just an archway with the theme song for planet coaster playing. You can see we have a whole bunch of speakers on the backside just bumping. Which is actually pretty cool. I ain't gonna lie, that's pretty sweet. I've never even noticed this. I don't know if this was part of the PC version or not, but I suppose I never did really use blueprints all that much. But pretty dope. I definitely, I definitely appreciate the effort there from Frontier. Continuing on from special effects to now just scenery, we have fences, we have targets, we have scenes, we have park scenery, we have vehicles, archways, statues, centerpieces, you name it, it's here. If we look at fences and borders, it's exactly what you might assume. We have a couple of different options for fences, a couple of different themes that they sort of follow. Even barriers for go-karts can be found in here, which is pretty awesome. Under scenes, this is where you're gonna find decorative groups of things that really will help blast your theme to the next level. Say you have a fairy tale park, but you don't really have anything other than buildings that's very fairy tale esque. Well, now you can add in a couple of fairy tale animatronics, some tents, or say you have a western section of the park and you're really having a hard time trying to figure out what's western and what isn't. Well, thankfully, Frontier includes a lot of those blueprints as well. Here we have a nice little western sort of campfire area. Or if you want to get really crazy and you're having trouble creating a kraken of your own, they do in fact have a kraken that you could place down in a pool of water and it looks pretty dang legit. 
Moving on from scenes, we have targets. Now there aren't a ton of different target options. What these are mainly used for is those sort of shoot 'em up track rides. For example, quick draw. Let's go ahead and place quick draw in just over here so you guys can understand what I'm talking about. As you can see, there's a couple of targets everywhere. Now, the purpose of this track ride is that each guest that hops on the ride will have their own sort of laser gun that they're gonna be able to aim at these targets and try to knock down as many as they can throughout the ride. So with these additional targets that you can get in the scenery, you can go ahead and just place up some targets wherever you need to. There's also a targets tower. This is very, very useful if you wanna use the quick draw ride, but you don't necessarily wanna use the blueprint version. You can make your own and sort of create your own target setup. Moving on from targets, we have park scenery. This is exactly what you would expect. It is basically scenery to, again, help boost that park theme to the moon. You want just a single Kraken tentacle in a pool, you can do that. You can have that right here. Or are you having trouble just finding random decoration to put around the paths? There's a couple of blueprint planet coaster signs that you can use that really help liven up your park. The main point about scenery is decoration. It's super easy to build a theme park. It's a lot more difficult to make that theme park look realistic or look good. So what Frontier has done with these blueprints is really given those people that might be creative but really have a hard time bringing their creations to life a good starting platform of just being able to add random decoration and random scenery all around their park. Moving on from park scenery, we have vehicles, which there aren't many of, and it looks like it's mostly for the sci-fi themed style of parks, but there is also a festive biscuit train that you could use if you were making, I don't know, a Christmas themed? What even is this theme? There's also a Western train that you could place down if you needed that, but for the most part, it looks like a lot of their blueprints are this sort of sci-fi inspired stuff, which is pretty dope looking, I'm not gonna lie. Also, all of the rides in the park have basically broken down and I haven't yet done the staff video, so I don't exactly have any mechanics at this point to repair those rides, which is unfortunate, but it's fine. Moving on from vehicles, we have archways. This is, again, exactly what it sounds like. Just a bunch of different blueprint archways that you could use for entrances to specific rides or entrances to your park in general. The main purpose of archways, in my opinion, is to help separate those different areas of your park. Say you have a sort of Western theme in your park, right? But you're starting to stray away from that as there's only so many different scenery items you can use. So you're thinking, I'll just make a pirate area. Well, the only way you're going to be able to pull off that sort of transition from Western to then pirate would be, again, in my opinion, with an archway leading into that next themed area of the park. And there's big archways, there's small archways, there's a lot of blueprints. You can also, of course, make them yourself. If you press down your right stick, it'll take you over to the create tab and you can kind of do whatever your heart desires. Moving on from archways now to statues and centerpieces. This again is just a really, really great way for you to find some blueprints that'll just sort of liven up your park a little bit. Even something as simple as just additional entrance scenery can really do a lot for your parks. You could even use a lot of these blueprints for forks in your path. Say you have a path kind of similar to this one, except you don't have this center entrance to the park. You could just place this here to help break up this voided area that's in the middle of your paths. Obviously, this is way too big for this area, but you get what I'm saying. Now, moving on from basic scenery to now ride scenery. What this tab is, is essentially a group of shells that you could then place around your stations to sort of make it look like they have a building or even just the front of a building surrounding it. Now, I wouldn't use this 
swirly, whirly, twirly, gumdrop style of building. I'm more of the building a pergola over an entire station and calling it a day kind of a guy. But the fact that some of these blueprints are here will definitely help a lot of you, especially, again, if you're having trouble coming up with a good-looking front side of the queue, you could just place this down and then edit the building to finish out the back side using these existing walls and archways and things. Moving from ride scenery to now buildings, these are basically the empty shells of the buildings that you would have seen if you watched the previous video covering facilities. In that video, we placed down a fairy tale pip shot water facility, but now you have the option to just place down the shell of that building and then you could add in a specific facility to it if you so choose. You could also just go back to the facilities tab, grab that specific one that you're after, place it down, and then you could change out whatever facilities inside if you wanted to do it that way as well. There's also really, really big buildings if you want to get super crazy. You have a massive fairy tale castle right there. There's also some more modern city skyscrapers if you're into that sort of thing. Or if you just want some downtown looking city buildings for in a particular area of your park that's more of the welcome center if you will. You could very easily use just a couple of these blueprints and you could make a nice looking town square. You could have a food court here. Just trying to throw out a couple of ideas, but you guys get the point. Okay, this Western barn has to be new. I swear I've never seen this thing before in my life and I love it. I absolutely love it. I could have used this for so many other projects. But since I never actually take a look at the blueprints, I've probably totally missed that, and it's it's probably been there the entire time I've been playing Planet Coaster, but that's beside the point. But I'd highly recommend you guys just check this out. Just see what the blueprints have to offer, save yourself a lot of time, and just give them a chance. Like I said, you can always adjust them and change them however you need. It's just a lot easier to place down one big building rather than doing one wall at a time. And lastly, we have nature. Since this is blueprints, this is gonna be groups of nature that you can place down. We have some nice little tropical trees with just some basic rocks at the bottom. Now you're probably thinking, oh my God, 2G, I could easily place a tree and a couple of rocks down. Well, say your park was actually this big. Say those buildings in the backdrop out there were actual facilities that you wanted guests to interact with. You're gonna probably start to get really, really sick of placing down individual trees and individual rocks to get the look that you're going for. So Frontier offers a ton of pre-made little blueprints here that you can place down just to fill those random voids you might have. That way, you don't wear yourself out by manually placing down each individual scenery item. That is quite literally the reason that I dislike scenery so much is because it is extremely time consuming and ultimately not the reason why people watch Planet Coaster videos. But keep in mind, it also does make the rides and the facilities that you're working with much more beautiful. Even just adding this little sunflower patch in between these two buildings can really make a huge difference. Like, just look at this. Look at this. You guys don't even realize how time consuming it would be to manually place down each and every one of these little flower beds. Even to do something as simple as a fountain can take hours, you guys, hours. But with that being said, I do think it's important that we now focus from scenery to custom scenery, which is gonna bring us into this tab right here. Again, this is the create tab, which I will be covering in the next video. I'm not gonna dive too deep into this, but from the create tab, if we wanted to focus on scenery, we have the options of path extras, special effects, nature, props, and buildings. If you go into facilities, it's quite literally just gonna be your toilet blocks, your food stations, your, your drink stands, that type of stuff. So that's not technically scenery. But what is part of the scenery is benches and trash cans and picnic tables, all these great things. Now what's nice about the benches and the trash cans is they will actually automatically snap 
to the edges of your path. So if we wanted a bench right here, we just click A and it's gonna place a couple down right next to the path. And look at that, people are in fact tired in the park and they do need to sit down from time to time. As for this whole vomit situation right outside of the overpower that's been broken down for a long time, if we were to put trash cans at the exit, what that's gonna do is actually allow our guests to upchuck into the trash can rather than on the ground. To know where you actually need to place trash cans down, you can do at the exit of any ride that might be high in nausea, or you can just go around and look at the paths and see wherever there's trash, you can then grab a trash can and set that up over here. Moving on to special effects, this is where you're gonna find all of the fireworks, all of the display sequences that you can place down. Now, when you're doing this, it's important that you place them down in a group so that they all work together. Not only are there fireworks, but there are pyrotechnics, there's fountain splashing special effect type of things. There's laser beams, I mean, you name it. Even something as simple as a sprinkler spray. If you're one of those people that wants to make your park as realistic as possible, yes, you could place down sprinklers over wherever needs water. <laughs> but also, there's some pretty dope stuff in here too, like these little fire pits that you could place down. It's quite literally just a massive fire. Now, when placing these down, I would recommend trying to hide that sort of plate that it wants you to place down underneath the ground. The flames will still come up through, but at least then you don't see that it's not a real fire and that it's sort of this display special effect type of deal. From special effects to props, this is where you're gonna find every single little detail that can be found on a lot of those blueprint buildings that you can manually place down yourself. I'm talking about Christmas tree decorations. I'm talking about signs for specific vendor areas. You want a large inflatable chief beef statue? You got it. You can place this wherever you want. There's also things like massive floodlights that you can change the color of if you're making something underground. Giant pretzels because why the heck not? There's also my favorite part about the scenery stuff and that is editable signs. So if we have this sign placed down right here, we can actually add our own custom text to it. As you can see here, you can also change the font of it to whatever looks the best to you. But the nice thing about these editable signs and a lot of the other scenery items actually is you can set them up so they will advertise certain destinations to your guests. If a guest looks up and sees this on an archway, it says 2G, maybe you have a ride that's called the 2G, I don't know. You can set the advertised destination for when they see this sign to know that, oh, okay, that's advertising the gondola, for example. You can then confirm the selection with RB, and now every time a guest sees that sign that says 2G, they're gonna know, oh, okay, that's the gondola or whatever. What I used to do is set up a big sign right at the entrance just over here, and I would set it to advertise everything in the park. Now this didn't actually pan out the way I thought it would, but I mean, it it got people to be aware of everything that's in the park, whether or not they wanted to actually go visit the things it was advertising was totally on them, but you could probably do that as well. And lastly, this is where you can place down each individual rock, each individual tree, every tulip, now, like I said, this is probably my least favorite part about Planet Coaster, but if you want to be that person that places down each individual sunflower throughout their entire park, then by all means, go for it. But a nice thing about this is, say you wanted to create a scenery group of these sunflowers so you could sort of duplicate them around the area. Well, all you have to do is use the multi-select tool, select everything that you want to then group together, RB to confirm. You can not only save it as a blueprint and continue to place it down in other places, but you can group it into a scenery group where you can then duplicate all of those flowers and continue 
placing them along the side of a path or wherever you might be putting them. So I do hope this helped inform you guys about the wondrous world of scenery. Although I'm not super keen on placing down individual items, I am super, super glad that Frontier has included so many more blueprints in this version. Again, I haven't really taken a look at the PC version's blueprints, but I'm assuming, based on what I saw here, I do think there are a handful of extra blueprints that maybe weren't included in the PC version. So that is a wrap on the scenery. Once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.